law of miracles suggests that an individual can expect to encounter one in a million experiences known as miracles at a rate of around one per month. Professor John Edensor Littlewood of Cambridge University had introduced the law, which was included in his book, namely A Mathematician's Miscellany, a 1986 anthology of his work. It aims to discredit one aspect of alleged supernatural perception. Also, it is related to the more basic law of genuinely large numbers. The law of miracles states that with a big enough sample size, anything absurd about a single sample probability model can probably happen. John Littlewood was an eminent mathematician, best known for framing the Littlewood's law of miracles concept. His specific theory is that people see, feel, and hear things at a rate of one per second when alert. Besides, they are actively involved in routine activities, which are around eight hours a day. John Littlewood was a British mathematician who disproved the notion that miracles were anything more than statistical anomalies. Littlewood's Law of Miracles holds that miracles do happen at a rate of around one per month in the lifetime of a normal human being. The law's evidence is straightforward. People see and perceive activities at a pace of one per second when they are awake and actively engaged in their daily chores, which is around eight hours every day. So, on average, people experience roughly 30,000 events every day, or almost a million per month. These are simply not miracles, with a few exceptions, because they are inconsequential. A miracle happens about one in a million times. Consequently, individuals should expect a single miracle per month on average. Consider 100-year events, natural calamities happening after a century, economic recessions, scams, pandemics, political debacle to name a few. 100-year incidents can refer to a wide range of dreadful things. A one-in-the-year event does not imply that it occurs every hundred years. It signifies that there's a 1% possibility of it happening in any given period. It appears to be a low figure, but with several potential 100-year occurrences to choose from, what are the chances that any of them will take place in a particular year? If there's a 1% possibility of a new devastating epidemic, a 1% chance of clinical depression, a 1% chance of a flash flood, a 1% chance of institutional collapse, and so on, then the chances of anything horrible happening next year, or any year, are discerningly high. A miracle refers to a supernatural occurrence that defies conventional or scientific explanations. A miraculous occurrence is generally traced to the deeds of a supernatural entity, such as a magician, a deity, or a religious leader. Unofficially, the term miracle is frequently used to describe any good event that is relatively improbable, but not opposed to natural laws. These are, for example, surviving a catastrophic event, or just a great occurrence, irrespective of the likelihood. Some incidents have the potential to be miracles. Several exponents consider actual miracles as totally impossible, which requires deviation of known laws of physics within their realm of validity, or impossible to corroborate by nature, because all probable physical activities cannot be ruled out. Thomas Jefferson, for example, holds the former viewpoint, whereas David Hume holds the latter. Theologians commonly claim that God operates via nature, regularly with divine intervention. However, as a creator, he is at liberty to operate without, above, or against it as well. Any positive happening that is literally impossible or difficult to confirm by nature is referred to as a miracle. A miracle is a less usual sort of God's activity, wherein he evokes people's awe and stands as a testament to himself. According to a deistic view of God's relationship to the universe, a miracle is a direct intervention of God into the materialistic world. 
Miracles are usually thought to violate natural laws, whether produced by divine intervention, supernatural happenings, or individual action. Researchers rightfully regard them as contradictory. Because the rules of nature are unchanging and fixed, anyone who believes they've experienced a miraculous event is delusional. Simultaneously, there is one miracle that occurs virtually every day in the world that people never question if someone wins the lottery prize someplace. Naysayers are quick to point out that there is no need for a miracle because someone has to win. The lucky person, on the other hand, had a million to one chance of winning. Except for a miracle, what were their chances? In reality, J. E. Littlewood, a Cambridge University professor, mentions that anything can happen with a bigger sample size in his work, A Mathematical Miscellany. Using the definition of a miracle as a one-in-a-million exceptional occurrence, and the assumption that humans experience one event each second when they are awake, Littlewood calculated that all individuals should experience one miraculous event every month. Littlewood's law is the name given to it presently. Should people agree to it? That depends entirely on them, and how they interpret what is remarkable and what is not because what one person considers a miracle may appear ordinary to another. And that's what miracles are mostly about. What it means to a single person in a specific circumstance. That's why science considers them contradictory, because they aren't universally true. A miracle, according to Littlewood, is a one-in-a-million occurrence of extraordinary significance. He believes that when people are fully alert they will see or hear one event per second, which may or may not be remarkable. Littlewood also believes that a human is awake for approximately eight hours a day. As a result, an individual will have experienced approximately one million occurrences in 35 days under these assumptions. Adopting this definition of a miracle, one may expect to encounter one miraculous incident every 35 days on average. As per this logic, supposedly miraculous happenings are normal. Littlewood's Law, or Littlewood's Law of Miracles, refers to a mathematical conjecture by a Cambridge University professor, John Littlewood, 1885 to 1977, on the frequency with which a miracle occurs. It claims that miraculous happenings are actually commonplace when evaluated based on how much happens in an individual life. Littlewood's Law of Miracles claims that miracles occur at a rate of about one per month in the life of a normal human being. The law's evidence is straightforward. People see and hear things at a pace of one per second when they are actively engaged in life, which is around eight hours every day. So on average, humans experience roughly 30,000 events every day, or about a million per month. These are, of course, not miracles, with a few exclusions because they are of little significance. A miracle happens about one in a million times. So one should expect approximately one miracle per month if common sense is applied. Law of Miracles Is it superficial? People will appreciate reading Eliot Benjamin's fascinating essay, License Plate Synchronicity, it visually illustrates how seemingly random external events can coincide with people's own subjective requirements and desires, resulting in solid crossings. In his epilogue, Eliot Benjamin says that such synchronicities may remind people that the universe has underlying divinity that rational scientific technical minds cannot describe. While one may recognize that uncommon events can be explained in superordinary ways, this does not imply that they result from something irrational. Even the most seemingly amazing synchronicities may have a mathematical foundation. The chances of two events colliding in a significant way are higher than one generally believes. The ability to be conscious of how probabilities arise in human lives, moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, is the key to it all. John Edenser Littlewood, a senior wrangler at Cambridge University and one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century, 
worked extensively on the theory of large numbers. Littlewood discovered some surprising qualities in large numbers during his extended investigation, which he often collaborated on with his more famous collaborator, G. H. Hardy. It is now popularly known as Littlewood's Law of Miracles. Littlewood's Law of Miracles argues that miracles do occur at a rate of around one per month in the course of any regular person's life. The law's evidence is straightforward. People observe and perceive happenings at a pace of about one per second when they are awake and directly involved in their livelihood. It is roughly eight hours a day. In a nutshell, the total number of events that occur to individuals each day is around 30,000, or around a million a month. There are surely not miracles, with a few exceptions, because they are trivial. A miracle happens about one in a million times. As a result, one should expect approximately one miracle per month on average. One may recount a series of incredible coincidences that occurred to him and his companions, all of which may be explained as the result of Littlewood's Law. Simply put, the law of extremely large numbers asserts that any ludicrous event is likely to occur, given a large enough sample size. The idea is that among the population of 250 million people, truly exceptional events such as those that occur just once in a million are sure to be frequent. If one in a million people have a coincidence per day, one can predict 250 occurrences each day and close to 100,000 occurrences per year. From a year to a lifetime, and from the world's population point of view, one may be certain that he will see incredible happenings. Such occurrences are frequently recognized and recorded. It's difficult to shake the eerie sense if it happens to all individuals or someone closely linked. Another aspect of Littlewood's idea of enormous numbers, which is superficiality, corroborates Elliot Benjamin's observations that tell two distinct random events intersect to draw an X. If there are thousands, if not millions, of events in individual lifetimes recorded in fractal ways, it should be predicted that two or more events will collide for every 10,000 or more. If people pay attention to that intersection, they'll notice a meaningful coincidence the significance being that two seemingly unrelated components have something in agreement, whatever that intersection may mean. One can even split off and construct a broad generalization from this. Some people look for these rambling musings, and some do not. It is presumed that some individuals are more attuned to or acutely aware of the crossovers which occur at random and therefore see more life interpretations, even though the meaning intake is basically equal for all. In other words, some people seek the little wood brook and jump right in, and some are unwilling. It's possible that blind typing will create a legible word by coincidence, but the trick is to be aware of that possibility and recognize it when it happens. Otherwise, so many incredible coincidences go absolutely unnoticed. If people can keep this mathematical matrix in mind, they may be able to experience spectacular divinity on a monthly, if not daily, basis. The theory of huge numbers, as individuals already know, supports this idea. The only genuine flaw is within human heads. It involves a monumental effort on the human side to be open to what bizarre coincidences may strike them. It is required to witness Littlewood miracles, or desultory desiccations, random events intertwining in profound X patterns. Littlewood's law, curiously enough, demands people to be extremely attentive at first. Elliot Benjamin's work with license plates exemplifies this concept wonderfully. People believe that a revamped version of Littlewood's law akin to what they call desultory decussation, can explain aberrant synchronicities without the need for supernatural or paranormal explanations. The extreme implausibility of an event sometimes blinds all to the fact that such happenings are statistical, even if they are infrequent. 
The Law of Miracles was formulated by Cambridge University professor J. E. Littlewood and released in the article A Mathematician's Miscellany, a collection of his work. It aims to dispel one element of the alleged supernatural human experience. It is associated with the more relevant Law of Truly Large Numbers, which asserts that any awful thing is likely to occur with a bigger sample size of numbers. A miracle, according to Littlewood, is an unusual event of great significance that occurs one in a million times. He assumes that throughout the periods that a person is awake and conscious, they will have one incident each second, which may or may not be remarkable. Littlewood also believes that a human is awake for roughly eight hours every day. Consequently, a person will have experienced 1,008,000 occurrences in 35 days under these assumptions. Considering this definition of a miracle, one might expect to witness a sudden miraculous event every 35 days, implying that seemingly amazing happenings are actually normal. Law of Miracles the Global Media Cord As communities and media grow, selection influences in media become stronger. It makes infrequent data points generated by atypical processes, like the mental hoaxer's progressive dishonesty, as evidence of anything, and must be overruled. Anything that happens at scale will get repeated a modest but non-trivial number of times. By emphasizing stories and events instead of trends and averages, online and mainstream media, alongside social networking, have become increasingly misleading about the state of the globe. This is because, as the world's population grows and media's reach expands, the media's desire for narrative focuses on the most extreme outlier data points. These, on a global scale, are deeply deceptive because they are driven by uncommon practices such as the mentally unwell beings or hoaxers. On a worldwide platform, anything that can transpire will influence a tiny but non-zero number of times. This has been summed up as Littlewood's Law. Miracles happen at a rate of around one per month throughout the life of any normal individual. This must now be expanded to a global scale for hyper-networked international media to cover all correlations, hoaxes, psychological disorders, emotional oddities, and extremes of continuums, fallacies, misconceptions, violent extremism, supernatural events, and other anomalies affecting the world's population. As a result, there will be enough miracles that all media coverage of events might be made up entirely of extreme outliers it may happen even if it may appear to be an exceptional claim to suggest that all media reported occurrences are flukes. It generates an epistemic environment that is antagonistic to understanding reality, one that is geared to locating and magnifying the least representative data points in large quantities. Subsequently, any individual anecdotes or narratives that are selectively presented but claims sometimes implicitly, to be symbolic of a common pattern or fact about the world, should be treated with considerable caution. Standard approaches such as critical thinking, stressing patterns and averages, and insisting on sources can all assist in combating the prejudiced influence of news. The irony of news is that the more people go through it, the less they get to know since they are gathering an ever-growing armory of facts and illustrations that are normally accurate. However, the interpretations bear very little resemblance to reality. This has always been true. Still, both social networking and online or mainstream media that are quite vulnerable have become progressively ambiguous about the state of the world. They only focus on stories and events instead of trends and averages which slide in and fades out like the issue attention cycle. They make sense when fact checkers, slower follow-up reporting, or missteps to replicate can catch up. The said cycle may then speed up. Who can recall the recent social media, let alone the catastrophic, that happened a year ago? Scott Alexander 
had rightly pointed out in 2017 an irregularity in the narrative in the follow-up to a news item that received significantly less coverage than the original. One may recall how the followers of the ex-president of the United States must have sparked an anti-Semitic wave of violence. Also, one may remember how some of the events were linked to a liberal magazine employee who was anti-government. Littlewood's Cluster of Laws Littlewood's Law of Miracles It is fascinating because it displays a variation of Law of Miracles in a world of eight billion people, a one in billion occurrence will occur eight times a month. It happens in a world with a widespread network, smartphone provision, and affluent people. Littlewood's Law is a specific instance of Mosteller and Diakontas's The Law of Truly Large Numbers, published in 1989. The Law of Truly Large Numbers Simply put, the Law of Truly Large Numbers asserts that any preposterous event is likely to occur, given a large enough sample size. The idea is that among a population of 250 million people, truly unusual events, such as those that occur just once in a million, are sure to be frequent. If one in a million people have a coincidence every day, one can predict 250 occurrences each day, and approximately 100,000 occurrences annually. From a year to a lifetime, and from the United States population to the world's population, one can be certain that he will see incredible happenings. Such occurrences are widely identified and documented. It's difficult to shake the eerie sense if it happens to all or someone people are familiar with. Human extremes are not only stranger than what one imagines, but it is stranger than truth. Law of Miracles and Corresponding Fields Politics Hate crimes and anti-Semitic acts are extremely infrequent in the United States, a country with a population of over 325 million people. Therefore, there is no need to link them to a common source. A surprising proportion of hate crimes are shown to be hoaxes committed by members of the targeted group. The trouble is that there shouldn't have to be any good reasons. One of the most recurring motifs in accounts of con artists is how comprehensible their schemes are when people consider how much good faith they assume and how they are maligned, borrowing and attempting to steal both wealth and power to fill the space within. Although the most consistent theme in the books of forgers, fabricators, and hoaxes is that the investigator explores the evidence after trying all venues. After unconvincingly putting forth reasonable objectives, such as job development and frequently interviewing them at length, just to be mystified by deflections and lies, everything is eventually left in silence. What motivated them to do it? No one is aware. People would probably think it was excuse-making if someone said that he didn't really assume these anti-Semitic hoaxes are true, in the sense that the U.S. President's election has bolstered a handful of anti-Semites. There should be something fishy going on, like maybe a worker has forced them to stir up donations. If someone said he didn't trust them, maybe they were phony, because some VOIP pranks did it all by themselves. One may think that they were directly making excuses and ignoring reality. To put it mildly, they should be ashamed for the absence of intellectual honesty and blatantly partisan attitude. Technology Accidents in the workplace are similar. Rare consequences don't always necessitate common causes. A freak accident, for example, could have a weird cause. Post-mortems on industrial catastrophes frequently describe a long chain of bad events and interlocking failures that contribute to the final explosion. The Swiss cheese model imagines each layer of systems as being like a slice of Swiss cheese, and only when the holes of six or seven layers line up, anything can fall through. The systems were always failing to some extent, but they were so redundant that a complete failure was prevented until it eventually happened. Everyone marveled at how seven distinct things went wrong at the same time. 
Because airplanes are so safe, planes no longer collapse for blandly plausible reasons like the propeller dropped off the plane, or the pilot couldn't fathom the planes in the dense fog. The residual aviation occurrences now tend to be astounding in some way. The German wing's suicide needed a suicidal pilot who wished to take the entire plane with him, and ill-functioning of post-9-11 security mechanisms intended to prevent hijacking and crashing airplanes. In technology, professional developers who work on global-scale systems, also known as hyperscalers, are pressured to face reality at that magnitude. Just about anything that can go wrong will go wrong eventually. It is not always, of course, otherwise they'd have been fixed long ago. However, a non-zero frequency could be enough to initiate a new failure mechanism and damage or even implode computer systems that remain rather fragile than all other processes. When systems fail in unexpected ways or data points emerge that people didn't realize were even possible to grasp. These anomalies sparking bugs make for entertaining war stories. However, they also highlight a more serious point about reality exceeding developers' imaginations. Science One may consider scientific writings. One may also regard a perfect scenario in which all equations are always right, all projects are preordained, and so on. Each paper does have the equivalent of multitudes of NHST tests due to the enormous exponential growth of the academic industrial complex across the globe post-World War II. Besides, one may assume fairly normal research practices of testing a few configurations on a few subjects. Further, people may use a few covariants and picturing the data beforehand to decide on a statistical analogy. Each paper carries an average of thousands of NHST tests. Thus, it is highly probable to legally observe either P equals 1 in 1 billion or P 0 0.000005 simply when the null hypothesis is true, which is never feasible. People can observe P 0 0.000000005 if they consider only the most recent batch of foot papers from perhaps the previous decade. All of these lead to the realization that the null hypothesis is correct. In practice, the situation is even worse. When users add in the low or non-zero base rate of scam, dubious research practices, inaccurate parametric modeling assumptions, prevalent and selective reporting, Odd phenomena like the lizard man constant in surveys, where a small percentage of respondents will always answer at irregular intervals, or provide the troll reply with fragile justifications if challenged, and so on, it's no surprise that the odds are stacked against people concerned. Moreover, there comes the point where no matter how many studies there are on a given topic, people still don't have a lot of faith in it since the data might be measuring the degree of trash in that field in place of the substantial effect they're looking at. Media Can masses rely on movies or images that appear to be real? After all, no hoaxer could or would expect to generate such a realistic video. It's not due to deep fakes, but because humanity has committed itself to prompt millions of highly complex fake news using its maximum intellect and substantial resources to create fictitious representations of fake situations, such as Hollywood films. Many hoaxes or counterfeits are of high caliber simply because they are repurposed from mainstream media, visual effects, mockumentaries, and other forms of entertainment. These are held to the highest standards and purposefully meant to remove any traces of being fiction. Every day, Fact-checking websites face pieces plagiarized from political satire sites, such as the Babylon Bee or The Onion, which are recirculated and misinterpreted by news readers. It can be found in the most reputable sources and archives. Law of Miracles – A Simple Understanding Miracles are typically defined as divine actions that contradict natural laws, it's not an unexpected definition. However, while this definition appears simple and basic on the surface, 
it is challenging to apply. These issues can put into doubt a significant human belief. It holds as a core premise that a divine and supernatural power commit miracle. So, even if these challenges are obscure, one should investigate their complexities. The logical questions are, can people elicit adequate, reliable evidence of miracles? Is it possible to tell the difference between miracles and simply extraordinary elements? Is it possible for the natural laws to prevent God from performing miracles? Reliable Evidence A well-known 16th century philosopher, David Hume, was of the negative view, implying that no meaningful testimony could be provided. Such testimony, he believes, presents an almost insurmountable obstacle. He thought that no testimony was sufficient to prove a miracle unless it is of such a nature that its falsity would be more remarkable than the reality it tries to establish. For starters, no miracle has ever been verified by a substantial number of persons of such unquestionable common sense, education, and knowledge as to ensure that they are not fooled. People can testify events, the alleged miracle, that took place in such a public manner and in such a well-known part of the world, to make the detection of any falsehood a difficult task. They can also corroborate all of these requirements that must be met if they have entire faith in human testimony. In other words, a miracle is so significant while also being so unlikely, and humanity is so strikingly defective and imperfect that no one could give a trustworthy witness one should be more skeptical of the witness than believers in the miraculous realm. But one should keep in mind that this is people's world. The fallibility of humanity applies to the genuine, contingent, and messy version of the world. Philosophy permits mankind to think about other worlds besides his own. Can one get adequate believable testimony in some imaginable world, a world with superior human nature? It is possible people's perceptions will be more accurate, their moral purity will be higher, and their mental memory will be better. Alternatively, people can plague the world with Asimov's three rules robots. In such imaginable environments, the accuracy of testimony could climb to a level of acceptable integrity. Perhaps such a world could not have been imagined in Hume's time. However, such a fictitious universe can now become a reality extraordinary elements. Every day a portion of the billions across the globe, and more generally throughout the universe, will undoubtedly fall outside the regular course. There will be many standard deviations outside the ordinary approach. Can people possibly distinguish the truly divine element from the simply unusual approach amid this avalanche of events? How can people recognize a phenomenon as an act qualifying being a miracle? It's worth noting that people are assuming adequately reliable testimony here. As a result, one may wonder if one could find miracles or become a contender for miracles. Naturally, the facts are reliably reported among the immense cacophony of remarkable but otherwise mundane happenings. If people look at the right qualities of the phenomenon, it will most likely happen. Three characteristics stand out. A range of possibilities, uniqueness, attribution. Take the weather into consideration. The fundamental nature of weather is prone to change. Temperatures, precipitation, and winds can all vary dramatically. A storm with 200 inches of rain or a wind speed of 250 miles per hour would be exceptional but possible. However, a certain range of possibilities practically never exist within that spectrum. Wheat grains do not pour in as precipitation, but rain does. Temperatures differ in different places, but not in the same way. So, if people step outdoors to a hail of wheat flakes, and the temperature difference between the front and back yards measure a hundred degrees, one may take it as a miracle. Consider exoplanets in terms of uniqueness of observation. Men discovered planets, and so they have only recently begun to comprehend the concept underpinning planet formation. 
planets discovered for the first time would almost certainly constitute an addition to the current restricted knowledge rather than an exception. Several years of practical experience and scientific analysis have given people an understanding of water's properties. One could think it's a miracle if some of them turned into wine all of a sudden. One may talk about attribution or whether or not the incident can be ascribed to a heavenly cause. Also, people may consider what would happen if a normal water sample from a typical lake taken by a biology student contains an unknown, amazing, and strange life form. One may also think about what would happen if a typical archaeological dig conducted in a typical place by an aspiring graduate student of ancient history unearths a previously unknown, amazing, and weird human civilization. Would one attribute the results to a divine entity's miraculous interference? Some might, but it's possible that people won't. Even if these findings were a huge outlier, people wouldn't call them miraculous. There is no heavenly link, no divine reason or purpose exists. No foreknowledge of the results occurred, and no religious instruction or divine insights were received. Also, one may think that an ancient religious manuscript was discovered that stated that a million digits into the decimal expansion of pi, the pattern at that point would give the GPS coordinates of a hidden cave. Furthermore, that sequence defines a molecular structure of a living form not previously discovered on Earth, which is billions of molecules long. The GPS coordination and chemical structure of the fossil discovered in the cave are also identical. The precision of the prophecy foretold in a religious source and the distinctive structure of the living form would point to a probable divine attribution. For the sake of faith, humans must now recognize yet another unfortunate issue. Do the Old Testament prophecies include enough precision to anticipate the miracles of the New Testament certainty? Did some New Testament miracle happenings, e.g. sick people healing, spirits manifesting in dreams, rank original enough not to be natural phenomenon? People should go into detail on the question, but still they can think about it. Miracles Here one concentrates on natural laws. Is it possible that nature, with its marvelous laws and uniformity, imposes restrictions on its Creator? Are divine miracles thwarted by the universe's underlying symmetries and principles? God operates from a level above the rules rather than on the same level as them. One may consider a feature film director, a video game developer, or a computer programmer. They may design worlds that differ from normal beings in terms of physical, biological, and social misconceptions, and then alter and develop them as needed to support the plot, play, or study. People can also imagine that their reality operates in a similar way to that of a god. Such a heavenly entity might recode earthly elements at will, allowing it to generate any contravention, expansion, or suspension, or execute miracles. As a result, a divine being cannot function in the sandbox of human laws. One may judge a divine being constructing a sandcastle, or a film director including a sandcastle in a film. Neither of them would have to carve the castle out of actual sand. Rather, a film director may build a sandcastle with a digital graphic. In a figurative sense, God could reconfigure the reality as if it were a series of illuminated pixels on a smartphone. In the framework in which one wishes to talk, a miracle is an intentional intervention into the illusion formed by human thinking. There are agreed-upon natural laws from a human viewpoint, such as to cause and effect, or life and death. Nature's rules appear to be immutable and unalterable. These principles provide order and security to people who are aware of physicality by creating a balanced, peaceful, and helpful environment. Despite the fact that all known natural laws are derived from a source outside of itself, the Creator can alter the creation and intervene. The rules of nature flawlessly provide for the well-being of its inhabitants in perfect consciousness. 
Humanity's negative ego has distorted that ideal perception, changing time and space, dominion and power in one's life. A miracle is an intentional intervention that realigns the reality in which one lives with the truth. For example, if someone broke a bone, others would wonder at the body's ability to mend the fracture in six or eight weeks, whereas in actuality, the laws of nature allow for immediate healing. The laws of nature are genuine and eternal, but humanity's consciousness is restricted in understanding their true reach. A miracle is a divine intervention, a rip in the veil of consciousness that allows humanity's awareness to be brought into alignment with the fundamental rules of the universe. Wouldn't people regard life and death to be natural laws? So how can one come back from the dead? Nature's rules are holographic, just as dimensions and consciousness. The reality that one perceives is determined by the perspective from which one sees and the consciousness in which one resides. It is predicted that a few will intersect out of the thousands of events that occur in human lives. It will result in a profound coincidence. It's something everyone has experienced and is often termed as fake. While many people attribute events to Littlewood's law, the truth is that anything extraordinary or miraculous event is likely to take place, given a large enough sample size. When the situations occur, one can't help but experience the thrills that come with realizing that something more than chance is at work. The law of truly large numbers, attributed to Diaconus and Mosteller, is connected to this. The law of truly large numbers argues that if a large enough sample is used, the probabilities of a highly unusual event not occurring are even greater than the chances of it prevailing. Synchronicity, the experience of happenings that are unlikely to happen together rationally, is also noteworthy. Due to the intrinsic drive of individuals to discover a greater meaning or objective in life, human nature is particularly receptive to remarkable happenings. So, rather than noting when things don't happen, people look for miracles and attribute celestial sources to them, such as God's plan or fate. It's another way for the mind to fool humans into surviving another day, similar to the Chandian effect or the mental state of love and reverence. For example, if a farmer's harvests begin to collapse due to drought, he will begin to pray. Every day, year after year, he pleads for the rain to save his honest efforts. Years go by with no sign of rain, yet he persists with his prayers. After some time, the drought finally comes to an end, and rain eventually falls. The farmer rejoices, thanking God for providing rain and reviving his livelihood. He informs his family that God has heard his prayers. Despite this, he never mentions or even considers how many years his prayers have gone unnoticed. By nature, people count hits rather than misses. In reality, the notion that anything can transpire is due to the existence of mathematics. One doesn't consider the fact notable that one rises in the morning and completes the daily chores. So, one abruptly dismisses its significance. On the other hand, if one receives a phone call about something unexpected while taking a shower, he would consider it miraculous. Because of Littlewood's Law of Miracles and the Law of Truly Large Numbers, people know that these events aren't miraculous. Rather, they're inevitable. Because humans are essentially subpar species, they have trouble comprehending events in both large and small sizes. As a result, they are unaware that miraculous events, which have a one in a million likelihood of occurrence as per Littlewood's law, are actually fairly prevalent. One million happenings appear to be a lifetime, an astounding quantity that one cannot fathom. Therefore, one miracle every million events seems improbable. Despite this, Littlewood believed that one million events take place in a month. Concerning a person's lifespan, it's a minuscule sum, except for premature demise.